Hey guys, welcome to Monday Club. I'm Gus Davis. I'm Peter Bois. T-G-I-M. That's right. Forget Friday, forget Saturday, forget Sunday. It is Monday. Monday is the new weekend and we are here to party it up with you. Welcome to the Monday Club. Welcome to Monday Club, the place where Monday is the new Saturday. Hello, all you wonderful Monday Clubbers out there. My name is Peter Bois. I'm here with the ever-amazing Gus Davis. Welcome to Monday Club this week. On this week, we talk, we cheers to origami penis towels. What? Someone won a free drink from us. Dirty little football quiz continues on. And in Stories from the Road, we're sick and have epic travel fails you guys get to laugh about. Uh, We also have some healthy, teachable moments for you. Welcome to Monday Club. What's up, Gus? Two, three, cheers! (laughs) (laughs) Cheers, my good friend. How are you, buddy? Oh my God! Happy Monday, my friend. I'm doing all right. You doing okay? Uh, you know I'm getting over my cold, but uh, hopefully I won't hack up a lung during the podcast, and yeah, look, uh, I, I won't make uh, weird, awful sinus nasally uh, mucus <laughs> sounds for you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know that's all right. I think everybody will forgive you for being a little tiny bit under the weather. Uh, look, I want to get this out of the way, Pete. I apologize to you, my friend. Uh, I saw you in where were we last last week? We were in uh, OKC. Oklahoma City? Oh, yeah. We were in Oklahoma City. So I saw you in Oklahoma City, and I think I said hi to you maybe twice, but you were sick both times, and I was just kind of like, hey, man, and then I sprayed you with Lysol and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was a condom on uh, Gus when he came to get, <laughs> say hi to me. <laughs> he did not want to catch anything. A Lysol no, condom. No, man. I put on the full-on Darth Vader mask and was like, hey, bro, it's good to see you. Yeah, stay the hell away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you did help during my showcase, and I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah so about about your showcase, so, so I yeah, sure, I helped a little bit. Pete asked me to turn on or turn off, and then turn back on some lights. So in my skill set, Monday Clubbers is flipping a light switch. I can do that. But the funny thing is, I went on. I Pete said, "Hey, let's uh, let's have you turn the lights off right before I start, so that people can see my video." So. The intro started, a guy walked out to introduce Pete, and I went over and flipped off the lights. Then I went and sat back down, and then I noticed that the guy who was introducing Pete was doing it from a script, and it was pitch black in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, he's like getting up close to the screen so he can use the screen to reflect off and read your intro. It was, uh, it was pretty good. This so the... You're welcome, man. I almost totally screwed it up for you. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I've heard that. I did not know that because I was backstage. Oh. I didn't see that going on. That's hilarious. Yeah, it was... It was really funny because I what I thought was going to happen is that the stage lights were going to come on and then that would be fine. But uh, no, they did not. That happened later so that people could see the video. And yeah, there's this this guy who gets up there in front of everyone at this conference and he's like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you our featured performer. His name is and then the lights go off and he's like, uh, OK. <laughs> nice. I should, I, next time a flashlight. Yeah, yeah, we'll be For nicer my, to our techies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, so we yes. are cheersing. Uh, uh, we, we'll talk more about that, I guess, in Stories from the Road. But uh, we are cheersing today to origami penis towels. Did I you say know, that right, Gus? Uh, yeah, am, I, those, am I saying something wrong about this? You know, it's this? funny because those are three words that I understand each word individually. But put in a combination... Don't make a whole lot of sense, but yeah, we, we I I don't know who found this video. Uh, it's but... on it's on Reddit, so that means oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's probably me then. Late <laughs> nights. So so here's here's the the way this thing is set up. It's set up as, uh, hey, would you like to see some bar magic? So there's this uh, bartender waitress chick behind the counter, and there's a guy, and he's like showing both hands. And he lays out like a towel that he got from probably from the hotel or from the restaurant, or whatever. And he sits it and he like makes some magical passes over it and then has her make some magical passes over it. And then he folds it 
and he makes more magical passes on, and he's like making a big production out of this whole thing. And then the way that he's folding it up, when he rolls it up together, it's very clearly just a giant throbbing cow penis. <laughs> it like <laughs> rises up <laughs> from his napkin, and the chick just dies laughing. And uh, and and the funniest part is. The whole time she's been doing all these hand gestures like he's been doing to make it look like it's magical. Uh, anyway, it's a it's a the, pretty good piece of bar magic. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. It does kind of look magical because the penis kind of rises almost by itself, it looks like, as he rolls it. <laughs> <laughs> um, am I wrong? No, it's like... And it's it's got a, it's got a little bit of a curve on it. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think we should start this episode over. <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely right. It does, it does grow and rise all by itself, and uh, that's uh, that is sort of magical, but it's definitely funny. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's like there's... it's like they were uh, they were getting a, a little sonogram of the balls or something. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback, Batman gets a boner episode two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good callback, good callback. Yeah, man, uh, I think the. There's a time and place for that kind of bar magic, but the the way that this was presented was truly, truly funny. And uh, you know, you wouldn't want to do this at your kids' show. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely a fun bar scam or or a, an icebreaker or something like that. If you're hanging out and it's a, you know, it's a good time. Yeah. yeah. It was really funny, man. Uh, with somebody and... that can take the joke. <laughs> right. Definitely with somebody that can take the joke. <laughs> oh, so cheers to uh, the origami penis. To- oh, that is hilarious little bar gag. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. Hey, so. <laughs> Damn, I'm on a roll today. Any- y- yeah, you are. Hey, do you have any bar magic that's kind of like that? That's like some, maybe not necessarily, a, you know, making a penis appear, but like, do you have any like go-to bar stunts or anything like that that you do when you're out? No. I am such a boring magician when I'm social. I, uh, I'm i kind of an... I just kind of want to uh, blend in with the background and just be part of the group. I'm not one to stand out in social situations. It's weird, right? Since I want to be on stage and be the center of attention. Is that right? Yeah. No? Yeah, I, do, I, I guess. Do, do you find that about me? I, I, I kind of don't... I don't know. I think that there are... There's two types of people, right? There's the type of person that, uh, when it comes to magicians, there's the type of person that just kicks back and relaxes and just joins in with the group and doesn't really show out. And then there's the type of person who just can't turn it off, right? And so they sit there and they do all the little, like, napkin tricks or bring a deck of cards or something like that. Yeah, I wish I did. I wish I was more like that and was the social uh, butterfly magician type person that... But I'm not like that. I feel uncomfortable sometimes doing it in social situations unless people beg me to do a magic trick or something. So I don't really do that. But the uh, origami uh, penis towel actually reminds me of the uh, the sponge penis that Magic Shop okay. sells. Do you ever, have you ever okay. seen it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, for those of you not familiar with the sponge ball trick, there's like these red sponge balls balls made of sponge and you put them in spectator's hand and they disappear and reappear wonderful fantastic trick amazing magic and then uh if you want you can at the end of as for the big finale you put the balls uh the sponge balls in their hand and then when they open them they magically turn into uh, a sponge dong <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, on that note man uh i was at a summer camp one time where they taught kids like between the ages of six and uh 12 how to do magic tricks and i won't name any names because i know it was an accident but this guy who was trying to do a a sponge ball to rabbit trick which is where you put a round sponge ball in someone's hand and then they open it up and there's a giant rabbit well he hadn't traded it out for the for the nightclub show he had done the night before and so he puts the ball in their hand and it's like some six-year-old, and they open in their hand, and just this giant red dong pops out, and he, you know, grabs it and just tosses it in his pocket, and all the counselors and all the staff are like, <gasps> you know, but the kid was like, cool! <laughs> it's a tree! And we were like, it's a tree! That's right. <laughs> uh, do you have any, like, go-to uh, bar magic that you do, or 
stunts or puzzles or whatever? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some times where I'm out and it's just either as an icebreaker or something like that, I'll do the uh, – one of my favorites is taking a straw and putting it on top of a salt shaker and uh, it, I, I'm trying to explain how to do this. So you take a, you take a drinking straw still in the – still in the piece of paper and you tear off the paper when while you're tearing off the paper you slide it down the straw so that it it creates static electricity on the straw and then you put the straw on top of a salt shaker and you do this all surreptitiously just it looks like you're just taking off the the wrapping paper you put it on top of a salt shaker and uh, it also works on a pepper shaker. I don't want. I don't want to discriminate against the seasonings. Or... <laughs> so, so you put it on there, uh, so it's balanced on like a seesaw. And then when you put your hands around the straw, the straw starts just turning like a like clock hands, and it looks like you're controlling it using uh, using magic. And that's just kind of a fun little stunt to do. But if I'm out with a, a group of students, or if I'm out and uh, it, like the wait staff seems super cool. That's kind of a fun little icebreaker that that is kind of my go to. Uh, there's some other bar tricks and, and other stunts and stuff like that that in the right situation I'll do. But uh, very rarely do I go to those kind of things. Usually I just hang out and and talk to people. I'm, I'm kind of like you. It's like once I'm once I'm done performing, I just kind of like to sit back and and hang out with people, get to know people. But yeah, it's a there's a, like you said at the at the top of the show like there's a time and a place where it just fits in so perfectly that it just it that's what sparks people to kind of loosen up and have good conversations yeah yeah so uh what are you drinking today so today my friend uh it's a, we're recording this a little bit earlier in the morning than we usually do cuz you have to actually get on the road and make some money so uh i am drinking a uh, a Gus Davis favorite it is called a comfortable screw. It's orange <laughs> juice and southern comfort. So Whoa! It's a comfort. It's a it's a comfortable screw, and uh, you're welcome. You guys should all try it. I poured way too much southern comfort in here. I poured like half of a glass of southern comfort, so I'm gonna be watering it down as we go along in the cast. Because, whoo, buddy, <laughs> <laughs> that is a Gus Davis original. I've never uh, I've never heard of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure somebody else has gotten desperate and not had any <laughs> vodka or anything to pour in their orange juice. So, uh, but it's a it's a tasty, tasty beverage. You should try it out. All right, I, want, I will. I'll have to grab some and, uh, southern and you, sir? Uh I have yeah. the Gus Davis hot toddy. I've got some tea and a little uh, and a little rum in here to help loosen oh. up the nasal passages and keep my throat well lubed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the hot toddy is, is awesome. Is, did you get a nice spiced rum? Oh yeah, Captain. Well, ca- mm. I oh, I always go to the captain. It's either captain for spice or Bacardi for kind of a regular rum. Yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan of the uh, old Captain Morgan. So yeah, man. Well, well, cool. Well, dude, uh, from from me and all the other Monday clubbers, we hope you feel better, buddy. I, being sick sucks. Thanks. I'm on the other side of it, so I should be feeling pretty good over the next week. Hopefully, you know how sometimes yeah. colds linger, though. You just kind of have nasal crap build up in there, and yeah. So. Hopefully, hopefully I'll feel better in the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, are you taking any medicines, or are you just kind of like soldiering it out and letting your body fight it off? Uh, I do, which is my teachable moment, which I will tell you about at my teachable okay. moment. Yeah. All but, right. Uh, All right. Well, uh, I'll hold my breath till then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monday Clubbers, thank you guys so much for listening and being part of the club. Uh, we love that you join us every week for Monday Club, and uh, please tell a friend about uh, what we're doing here. We'd love to... Uh, Uh, Grow the club uh, with your friends and uh, uh, give us a little love on iTunes, a little rating, and uh, subscribe through there if you can. And, uh, yeah, if you have any uh, questions, comments, or concerns, want to chat with us, check out our Facebook or Instagram. Everything's on mondayclubpodcast.com or email us mondayclubpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, so thanks for uh, being part of the club. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for listening and for for continuing to send us some encouraging notes we are we're on episode 31 can you believe that damn we're gonna be older than me soon <laughs> in episodes yeah That's like, we I, I remember us celebrating our 18th episode and be like woo, we made it to 18 
this is awesome. I wonder if we after after we get into our episode forty, we'll be like, uh, we'll we'll celebrate every ten episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then uh, episode one hundred, it'll be well, we should be dead by now. I'm not sure why this has lasted so long. <laughs> Can you euthanize this podcast? <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so much for listening. I want to give a crazy, crazy, crazy uh, congratulations to one of our listeners, Miss Leanne. Leanne and her brand new husband, Brett. Congratulations on your wedding. That's uh, that. We in. are all. Yeah, yeah, we are all sorry that we missed it. We had to actually be out there trying to make some money, uh, but it looked like a beautiful wedding, and I hope you know we love you. We also want to give a huge shout-out to our winner of a free drink last week on our uh, Dirty Little Erotic Football Quiz, Mr. Eric Diddleman. Congratulations. Dude, so here's how nice Eric was. Not only did he complete the challenge and write in his uh, erotic football statement, uh, but uh, which I'll, I'll read it, by the way, because the secret word was vampire. Remember? Yeah. yeah. So, so here's, here's, what he, here's what he wrote. I'll read this in a sultry voice, Eric. <laughs> Gus looked at Peter longingly and bit his own lip like a vampire as he said, I want a free drink. <laughs> oh, which was great good job eric that was awesome wonderful uh, but then here's how nice he was he did everything right he won the free drink i i got in contact with him i was like hey bro you won and he was like great i want to donate my free drink to james caldwell who is our sound engineer who works tirelessly late nights to try to get this all edited together and so uh james you get eric's free drink and now Everyone else looks like they're kind of douche nozzles next to Eric because he's a nice guy. So thanks for ruining it for the rest of us, Eric. We appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, thanks for the creativity uh, <laughs> on your yeah, yeah. on your on your sentence. That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah it was beautiful. Uh, I might get that tattooed on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my. Uh, my talk is coming up this Saturday. Remember a couple episodes ago, I. Uh, told you that I got booked to do a talk without any oh, magic. Oh yeah, yeah. Your 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 skeptics talk, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's celebration of the mind at Carthage College, and uh, so my working title for my talk is why a skeptic wrote a show about ghosts, and I have no clue what I'm going to talk about for 15 minutes. <laughs> Wait, guess... you only have to talk for 15 minutes? Yeah, I'm part of a, like a panel thing, and it's before my show at 5:30, and then I have a 10 o'clock show. Nine or ten o'clock show, so uh, I have to get to setting up and sound check and all that. So uh, yeah, I, yeah, just uh, just a quick fifteen minutes. Uh, I've been writing and I, I I've gone a few different ways with this talk, and, and I'm not sure exactly which way to go, but hopefully I figured it out, or will figure it out by Saturday, and uh, <laughs> maybe I'll just turn it into Q and A. That makes it easy, right? Yeah, well, Q definitely Q and A is an easy way to kill like five minutes. I mean, you, you so really you only have a ten minute talk, so that's good. Uh, what what do you think you have it uh, pegged out to be right now? Well, I guess I I want to talk a little bit about uh, well why I do uh, the ghost show, which what couple reasons. One is um, I love great stories, and there's amazing ghost stories that are crazy and really get you get you going. And then uh, the two, I, I think I want to tackle, this, this is a big idea, why people believe what they believe. That's, Man. That's a big that, idea. That is it, a big idea to do in seven <laughs> minutes before you do question yeah. and <laughs> But to do, yeah, I mean, it would be obviously pretty short. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of where I'm taking it a little bit and, you know, have a magician's outlook on that and my experience and how people – why people believe what we do or don't believe what we do and uh yeah so that's kind of where i'm at right now with it dude I think you that's know, a good direction yeah no i think that's a great direction uh I, man ah uh, there are, one of the things about having magic as a background that i think <laughs> i don't want to say ruins ruins it for people but uh i think is a factor in everything is that when you have magic as a background you're skeptical about everything right it's like like, someone says, oh, well, balls roll downhill. That's physics. Balls roll downhill. And your brain immediately, if you have magic as a background, thinks, I mean, 
Sure, but I could make it roll uphill, <laughs> right? Or or, or, or why are you stating something so obvious? <laughs> Is there something right. I'm missing here? Is there something you're hiding? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, man. So on that note, I I I ended up in a like a crap ton of Ubers this last this over this last week. I mean, I think I was in like six or eight Ubers over this last couple of days, and. I got in one guy's car, and he's sitting there listening to ghost stories, and he's like, man, these are just freaking me out, dude. Like, these people, like, really saw these things. And so him and I got in this very, you know, eight-minute impromptu talk about ghosts. And he was saying things like, man, you know, I I don't really believe in ghosts, but, I mean, these people said they didn't believe in ghosts until they actually saw one. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of the thing, right? Like, I think most people who have never, quote-unquote, seen a ghost, have that same idea. There's just this primal fear of, of, of if you saw something, that you would end up in the crazy club, right? You would end up in that pile of people that say they've seen ghosts, and no one would believe you just like you don't believe them. And so, yeah, with, with what you're talking about with this whole skeptics thing, I think one of the, one of the things about doing a ghost show or, or telling scary stories is that you're tapping into people's prime like like there's some primal emotions that are out there there's fear there's love there's heroism there's family like those are some primal ancient feelings that humans have and so yeah when you tap into those uh, uh i think it tells a more powerful powerful story so like for example i love scary movies but I hate being scared. So, like, I watch scary movies, and lots of times I'll, like, look away from the screen when I know the scary thing's going to happen, <laughs> right? Even though I, I love scary movies, that, that, that jump scare always gets me. And it's such, a, it's such a primal reaction that comes out when something jumps at this out of a mirror or jumps off the screen uh, that it's... It's a real reaction. I mean, I can watch The Avengers, and I enjoy that movie, but I don't jump out of my chair when when I'm watching Ultron get destroyed. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. Any, anyway, there's there's just a lot there that I think you can work with. That, uh, that I think you gave you me a few more minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah, I think you gave me a few more minutes. Primal Emotions, that's a great hook right there. I can talk about that for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And then and then question and answer, buddy, and then you're done. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. If if it goes well, I'm going to record it and maybe I'll uh if Gus is okay with it, I'll post it as a bonus episode uh oh, for yeah. you guys to see how good or well, I won't, if it's shitty, I won't post it. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, I'll never talk about it again. <laughs> no, man, I think you got it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so it, it's funny you said that you were your uh, event is coming up on Saturday. So for me, uh, I don't know if you remember, but I had this speaking gig at the University of Texas for on the national debt that was coming up. Oh yeah, yeah, I do yeah, remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I canceled it. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I did. And uh, so so here's here's how it went down. Uh, I am I am on tour for the better part of for the last two and a half weeks. I've like this is my one and only day home uh, this week, and then next week I'm gone to another conference, and then we're we've got shows all over the place. It's just a busy time for us, and so I looked at my schedule, and I would have had two days to sit down and actually get the, the and and I wanted brand new effects for this for this lecture because I knew I know exactly what I would do to match the the topic but it's not something i normally do and i was like man they're going to they they're going to pay me to come out and do this lecture and i would feel really bad taking their money and just only having 2 days and, and that's in a perfect scenario 2 days to get the stuff done so yeah man i i pass it off i called them i was like hey look i i don't want to i don't want to just take your money. I want you to have the right experience, and I don't think I can give you that right experience with the time constraints that I have. So let me pass it off to this guy who's a good friend of mine who works with cards and coins and bills and will do a, a really great show for you. And uh, me and this friend talked, and, and I think he has a great idea and a great handle on what he's going to do. And it's what I would do, except for he already has those chops instead of having to try to build it into a new thing. So uh, I, I, this, is a, this is teachable. This is like a bonus teachable moment. But 
Uh, yeah, I think if you're going to take somebody's money, uh, take it because you're going to be do a, a job that you're proud of. And if there's a, a reason that you're not going to be proud of it and you're just taking their money, then pass it off. There's somebody else who can do a better job. It's really big of you guys. I probably oh, would have taken their money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to look like an <laughs> asshole on stage and... Uh, and <laughs> we talked about doing that thing where it's like, hey, so what do you think the national debt is? <laughs> yeah, good, good, exactly. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had yeah, another. I didn't want to end up doing that. Uh, I had a custom presentation book years and years ago, and uh, I had it all scripted and had my tricks worked out. And this was for a, a corporate event, and uh, they they decided not. At the last minute, they said, no, just do regular magic tricks. So I, <laughs> I spent all the time <laughs> scripting and working out custom stuff for them, and then they bailed on me. So That's, that's always annoying, right? Uh, we sort yeah. of had that happen to us this last, uh, man, yesterday. We, did a, we, did, we launched a brand new uh, game show with a message. Uh, we were talking about Title IX. Which is some heavy stuff, man. Title IX covers like consent and uh, harassment and uh, like origami all penises. Of the, or, origami penises. <laughs> that's right. Like all, like uh, all of all of these issues that have to do with sexual violence and stuff like that. Which you know, big topics. Hard hard to make that fun in a game show format. Uh, but we worked really really hard to make it fun and also give away good information to students. And I show up to the event, and I mean, we're talking about months of work, and we get there, and they're like, man, yeah, I mean, if you could just, like, do a couple of those questions that cover the Title IX stuff, and then the rest of them, you know, make it fun. We don't want these kids to just be, like, scared about this issue. You know? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah cool, cool, cool. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, two months of work is yeah. Two months of work down is the just toilet. gonna sit on a computer for the next six months without anybody doing anything with it. Anyway, it's fine. It's just it's it's sort of the same thing where you work so hard to customize things and you care about it, and then they're like, "Hey, man, do do that napkin penis trick again." That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's like they bailed on you. You they yeah. they're like in the beginning they're like, "Yeah, we want to." we want to teach these topics and really send this message to the students and get this all the word out there and they're all into it. And then as it gets closer, they're like, well, you know, we don't want to like hit them over the head with it. You know, we want to sneak, <laughs> right. we want to sneak some things in there. We don't want to and feel, make everyone feel awkward for an hour talking about title nine issues. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, the hardest part for me with that title nine show was that, uh, so for, for those of you who don't know, I, I do a, a game show that's like Family Feud. It's a it's an homage to Family Food Feud, and so we put surveys up there or big topic questions, right? And then people answer for especially for these kinds of educational events. They answer what they think are the answers to that topic, and so you know, like <laughs> we'll get things like for 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 this Title Nine show, people were like, um. What is, uh, what is pedophilia? You know, and then everybody in the audience is like, "Ooh, good answer, good answer, good answer," and that's just super awkward. It's like, yeah, and the they're applauding is, for pedophilia. Yeah, they're like applauding for pedophilia. <laughs> so I had to address that early in the show. I was like, "Look, some of these answers you're gonna feel weird clapping for, but just remember, we're all we're all." Just trying to bring a little bit of levity into some serious topics. You know? <laughs> nice. Anyway, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Hey, I saw on Instagram uh, pictures of you in my favorite city of all time. Which city is that? I was in that a lot be, of cities. That would be Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. So I uh, buckle up, dude. I got a story for you. All right? All right. Click, all right. Click. So here's, here's the deal. I had a show that was just... Uh, it was... About forty five minutes north of north of Boston, okay? And so uh we we did the show. James James and I did the show. Uh and then the next day I had the whole day off because uh my my next show was in California and travel to get to California on the day that I had off was ridiculous. So I just took the day off in, in Boston. Uh let me start off by saying this. 
Boston has the crappiest roads of any city that I have ever been to in my entire life. Their their roads make no sense. If you've never been to Boston Monday Clubbers, take Ubers everywhere you go. Don't try to drive it yourself because you can see a store that is just across the street. And the only way to get there is to go right, take a tunnel, go six miles down, turn left over a bridge, and go back, and then exit off of a road that does three U-turns to get to that place. Like, it makes zero sense, these roads. Like, it, 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 it's, it's worse than random. And some of the roads... <laughs> Some of the roads will be like a three-lane road that will funnel into just one road for no reason and then go back out to being three lanes. It's like they want you to crash. It's like, oh, this is going to be fun. You guys should totally wreck your rental car. That, that's totally true. I lived there for years. You're, you're exactly right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you're not exactly an exaggeration. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, so, uh, so driving in Boston, I hate. But I will say... That Boston is, I think, the cleanest city that I have ever been into. Like, I didn't see homeless people. I didn't see trash on the road. I didn't see, like, uh, wrappers or shopping carts just littered underneath the bridges. Like, it was really a clean, pretty city. And so, Boston, I give you, I give you top marks for that. So, I did my show. I woke up. I took my car to uh, I, I just had a gust day off. I went to the uh, Museum of Science, which the Boston Museum of Science gets my highest rating of any museum I've ever been to. Pretty badass, like, huh? Have you been Pretty... there? Oh yeah, many times. Oh my god, dude! I was a kid. I was like a kid yeah. skipping with a lollipop at this place. It was amazing. What was the big exhibit this right now? Oh uh, man, uh, they did a. Uh, did, have you seen the the Theater of Electricity? Um, nah, maybe I don't know. Okay, okay. So they have, uh, they're not Tesla coils. They're they're some other kind of giant, uh, uh, electric. They're like giant tubes with two metal balls on top. Uh, so I learned a whole lot from the museum. Yeah. Oh side. yes, I I've seen this. I've seen this. Yes. Okay. Well, did you see the show where they they have the they like turn on the electricity and they have the electric uh, like the electric sparks. Play the uh, the Mario theme. I didn't see that part. Oh my god! I'll post that on Monday Club. Uh, it was science playing the Mario theme music. It was amazing. Uh, and then they just had so much interactive stuff. It was like if you can just if you can just be a kid and and take away all of your like like adult sensibilities and go to this place. First of all, it's huge. You could sp I spent four hours there and could have spent another two hours there. Um, it's ginormous, but like when you get to the the nature section, they have they have a full on beehive there with a tube that leads outside. So it's an active beehive, but all of the walls are are clear, so you can see in. And like it's like, hey, can you spot the queen? And and uh, everything's interactive and has like a you have a little bracelet thing, and it like scores you on your on your science knowledge and and gives you like crazy tests and tells you about the rods and cones in your eyes like the whole thing was freaking amazing plus they had dinosaurs there and you could explore <laughs> like uh uh what are those things called like space spacecrafts they had like models of spacecrafts there uh i was i was so freaking happy i was just in my happy place so i went to the museum of science then i took another uber to uh downtown Boston and went to the uh, Mike's Pastries. Have oh, you been there? oh yeah, famous oh, Mike's Pastries. Did famous you get a Mike's cannoli? Pastry. Yeah, I did. I got oh, two cannolis. They make amazing cannolis. Uh, I used to work. I used to work like two blocks from there at a restaurant called Mama Maria. It was like the best Italian uh, restaurant in the North End. And we always used to go to either Mike's or Bova's Bakery, which is uh, another couple blocks on Prince Street, and get. They both made amazing cannolis, but Mike's is the famous one. Dude, the line for Mike's wrapped around the building. It was insane <laughs> yeah. how big. That's normal. And that's a normal. That's a normal day. That's, yeah, no, it is. is. I, I could tell it's yeah. a normal day. So I, so I, being from not from the place, I waited in the line from the very back of the line into the store and got about I don't know two thirds of the way uh, up to the 
up to the register, and then I look up, and apparently they only take cash, and I didn't have any cash in my wallet, so I had to get out of line and go get cash, and then get uh. back in line. Oh, it was terrible. But I did get my little cannoli thing, so that was cool. Then I went across the street, and uh, it was like a gorgeous day there. It was right at sunset. The breeze was blowing. It was cool enough that you could wear a light jacket, but not cold. And I sat on a... I sat in an Italian food restaurant right at the bar that was facing the street, so they had the windows open. So, I mean, I could have reached out and touched people on the street and had some wine and some uh, gnocchi and uh, some nice bread and uh, olive oil and all that stuff. It was just perfect. And then afterwards, there's a cigar bar right next to Mike's that I went down to and... uh, had a nice cigar and some more alcohol, and I wasn't driving. Uh, and then uh, finally, I've been took... in that cigar bar. Have you? I've had I've had cigars and scotch in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, that place. That's a good spot. It's it's a in really the basement. Good spot. You go down into the basement. Yeah, it's like super lots of dark rock and, and brick. Looking. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. With yeah. big and leather couches. Yeah, and... yeah, and all the uh, all the bartenders and and all the wait staff there are super surly, but also really nice. And yeah, it was great, man. So. uh yeah, dude, I, uh, that was like a perfect gust day off. And then I went back to the hotel, and I got there uh, I got there pretty late. And then the next morning, I woke up at <laughs> I woke up at 3:30 a.m., which is important because I was flying to Cali, and at Cali time, that's 12:30 a.m. Okay, so all right, I'm following. All right, yep. so so I I get on my on my plane. It, and also screw Boston roads again because I almost didn't make my flight because I had to try to get gas there. There's no gas stations in Boston. I uh, yeah, that is uh, that's hard. Yeah, it's really difficult to get gas in Boston. <laughs> so teachable bonus teachable there's, moment. There's a gas three. station by the airport though, if you know where you're going. Yeah, well, I didn't, and I couldn't find it. And there's things like, so he, I got screwed over so many times. I got screwed over by the roads. Then when I tried to get gas, uh, I just looked at the at my GPS, and it said, oh, there's a 7-Eleven, like .3 miles away. I was like, great. So I went to the 7-Eleven. It was a 7-Eleven with no gas. <laughs> like, what the hell, 7-Eleven? You're a 7-Eleven. You should have gas pumps. But no, I It's didn't. for cigarettes and soda, man. <laughs> yeah. So anyway... I did make my flight. I flew from Boston to Denver, then Denver to Cali, uh, then dro- drove uh, half an hour out of the San Jose to where my event was, and I finally got to eat. I got to eat at one thirty. Yeah, it was one thirty California time, which is like, what, 4.30? Yeah, four thirty Boston time. That was my first meal of the day. Splashed water on my face, shaved, and made it to my event. My event started at six fifteen. I got everything set up. I was a hundred percent ready to go, and they had twelve people in the audience for my show. Oh, that blows. Yeah, it's like that's like sixteen hours of travel just to make one <laughs> show. Where they had yeah. twelve people, so that was kind Game of a kick in the nuts. Yeah, Game yeah. Show. Uh, yeah. So everybody's a winner. Is that how yeah, it works? That's, yeah, dude, yeah. it's funny. That's exactly what I did. I got I got all twelve of them on stage. I was like, look, we're just not going to have an audience. Everybody comes up on stage. <laughs> I, just, I just played played the played the game with all twelve of them. That's great. Uh, you need then, like a you need an applause track for that. It just uh, when like like we have here at Monday Club. <laughs> you need an applause track <laughs> when people are supposed to applause for those uh, small shows. Oh my god, that'd be great! Just give fake canned applause every time yeah. somebody answers a question. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna pause my story here because it actually gets worse as far as my travel is concerned, and we'll talk about that later on. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So let's uh, talk about some football. Patriots uh, beat the Jets twenty-four to seventeen. Patriots are now four and two. The Jets have moved to three and three. It was a very good game. Uh, the beginning, the Jets were smoking the Patriots. They were eating them for lunch. It was crazy how well the Jets were playing and how shitty the Patriots were doing. And then uh, something happened in the second quarter, and uh, the and the second and third quarter, they started to pick it up and uh, started to show that they were actually a good team. So uh, they ended up with the win. Did your uh, did your Patriot defense did they step it up? 
Uh, they did after after the Jets scored all seventeen of their points. Yes, yeah, they. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, oh damn! Oh, if they score you're another, you're seven... not supposed to go over there. Oh, okay, all right, all right, good talk. Yeah, <laughs> they they said to themselves, well, if they score. Uh, if they score seven points a quarter, that's not going to be good for us. So. <laughs> it's good math. Good math, defense. Good yeah. job. <laughs> yeah, so they, they opted to uh, play. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, uh, that must have felt good. Did you actually get to see the game or no? Uh, you know, I DVR'd it, and I watched it later that night. So I didn't see it live, but I am really good at fooling myself and pretending it's live. I still yell at the TV. My emotions go all crazy. It's the same game to me if I watch it uh, five hours later or the next day later uh, and as if I were watching it live. So, uh, yeah. And I got to fast forward through all the commercials. So I took That's a three and a half nice. hour game and uh, turned it into a two and a half. <laughs> that, that is pretty nice. Did you, when, is it, do you get spoiled? Like, do people spoil what the score is or who won or anything like that? Or do you try oh, to block I, all that out? I go radio and uh, internet blackout silence. I don't <laughs> – yeah. anytime someone comes up and is like, oh, the page – don't tell me. I haven't watched a game yet. Uh, I throw my hands up in the air and just yell at them. <laughs> Stop talking. Yeah. I oh, stay man. off Twitter. I stay off Facebook, everything. Uh, well, uh, dude, congratulations <laughs> to your football team. Uh, uh, you know, sounds like sounds like maybe maybe they're turning it around. Uh, I my prediction is they win the next three games. All right, my prediction is they win all the games. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I, listen, Monday Clubbers, as always, we know that you guys aren't uh, necessarily huge sports ball fans. Uh, however, Pete is, and we want to encourage him. Uh, it means a lot to him. Uh, that being said, since not everyone is a sports ball fan, or especially a fan of football. We decided to put together our dirty little football quiz. Here's how this is going to work. I realize that most of the plays and terminology in football are the same terminologies that are used in erotic fiction. So, here's what we're going to do. I got three samples from different erotic fiction stories. I'm going to read those samples. Pete's job is to, one, to identify the football terminology... Two, to define the football terminology. And three, to replace that piece of football terminology in each phrase. If he can do two out of three, I will buy a free drink to one of you out there in podcast land. So, Pete, you ready to do this? Let's do it. Oh, All wait. Right. We, uh, what's the uh, uh, password? Secret, oh, yeah. secret okay, word so, for the day. So, in order to claim your free drink, here's what you have to do. Go on our Facebook page. The secret word this week is gremlin. Ooh, gremlin. So one. you have to use the word gremlin in your own erotic sentence and also say, I want a free drink. So gremlin in that is, sentence. Yeah, in the sentence. So gremlin, erotic sentence, and I want a free drink on our Facebook page. Here we go. All right, your first one is this. <clears throat> She needed to open a valve and let the dangerous steam that she had allowed to build unchecked. Huh. All right. Um, this is a tough one. Yeah, I made all three of these kind of tough this week, bud. All right. No, this is good. Um, all right. She, I am going... Hmm. I am going to go with unchecked. That is correct. Unchecked hey, is correct. I love the little ding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, define it. Uh, this is going to be difficult. I'm not uh, 100% sure. I'm going to have to take a flying a guess at this. Unchecked. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, uh, I don't have a good one. I don't have a good definition for this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I might be failing you guys four, out there for your free drink. Three. Uh, okay, is if uh, if a uh, a defensive player, <clears throat> excuse me, if an off offensive player is not covered, they are unchecked. Is that correct? Yeah, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll give it to yeah? you. Yeah, oh! yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely will give it to you. Hold up, hold up. You get one of these. 
There you go. All nice. Right. So, so the definition is, uh, it's it's yeah, it's when a player is not hindered by another player uh, by the other team, and it makes it for a free play at the ball. So yeah, so if a receiver is unchecked, they can just run down the field without anybody ever yeah. touching them and and catch the ball. So congratulations, you got the first one, my man. Good job. All right. Good job. She right. needed to open a valve. And let out the dangerous steam that she'd allowed to build on the offensive player running down the <laughs> field without anybody covering him. Ding, 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 ding. Congratulations, <laughs> my man. All right. R- round number one goes to Pete. All right. It's gets, it gets more tough. Here we go. Here's oh, the next one. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> he wrapped one strong hand around the back of her head, gripping her long hair, and pressed his weight into her. Wow, wow. Um Um wow, this is tough. These are not obvious football terms. No, they're not, man. This is getting really hard. Uh I'm going to go <laughs> with What's that? Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> um I will go pressed. You got it, man! Oh! You got it! Congratulations! <laughs> pressed is correct! All right. Oh. Uh, what's the definition of pressed when it comes to football? Damn it, I need to start reading this rule book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pressed is um, uh, when the defense uh, is pressuring an offensive player, they are pressed. Um, that's uh. the best I got? I don't know. I'm very unsure. <laughs> You got it, man. Congratulations. That is the correct definition. All right. Yeah. Pressed, as defined by the uh, rule book in the NFL, is when a defensive player stays close to an offensive player and bumps them, uh, thus disrupting their passing route and uh, messing up the timing of a play. So, yep. You got it, man. That's two out of three. You did it. All right. All right. Boom. Someone gets a free drink. That's right. Well, you got to use it in a sentence. Okay. He wrapped one strong hand around the back of her neck. Head, gripped, gripping her long hair, and the offensive, the defensive player bumped the defensive player <laughs> to disrupt his passing route, his weight into her. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough, man. Good enough. All right. Uh, congrats. All right. So here, for, to be perfect this week, uh, here's your last one. All right. All right. This is for pride. This is for pride. That's right. Uh with one hand, she explored his body, and with the other, she unbuttoned her pants and slid her hand inside. <laughs> Ooh, that was extra sultry. Yeah, I've, I've been working uh, on my voices. Uh, I'm going to go with... Oh, there are two here, actually, that could be. Oh, yeah? Okay. Uh, but I'm going to go with Inside. Oh, you know what? That that is definitely one that could be. That's not the one I was going for. But since this one doesn't matter, that's fine. Could I but, go with? Could I go with? All right, then slid. Slid is what I was going for. Ding. Woo! That that would be uh, when a player slides has slid, like the quarterback has slid to uh, give himself up, and you're not allowed to tackle him. Correct, right there. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, it's when the uh, a player, any player is allowed to do it, but usually a quarterback will do a quarterback slide, which is where they down themselves, making themselves ineligible to be tackled. It makes sure that they keep themselves safe while also gaining positive yardage. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Pete Bois, who is three for three this week, which means one of you gets a free drink. Woo! Woo! Yeah, congratulations to you, whoever that is. Remember, and again, don't stop posting your erotic uh, sentences that's once right. the first one goes up. This 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 week, remember that the uh, the phrase that pays is gremlin, and I want a free drink. Make sure to put that in your erotic sentence on our Facebook page. Pete, you did great, man. I'm I'm impressed. I tried to make those a little bit more difficult. They were very difficult. I was uh, wary of my skills on this one. (laughs) Well, congrats, sir. Uh, I think that deserves a cheers. Thank you. Hey, it's time for Stories from the Road. 
like we haven't been telling stories from the road already. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I've been on the road a lot this week. I uh, I performed at Lincoln University, uh, and that school. There's a famous person that went there, and that's Thurgood Marshall. Went to college there, and that is the first African American justice of the Supreme Court, or uh, associate justice, I believe. Um, of the United States. So that was pretty cool. And you know how I know that? They said that they are getting a pre-screening of a movie that's coming out about him uh, for campus. So now I'm very interested in seeing this movie because I went to where he went to college. Isn't that cool how when you go to a place and you hear about their history or, or – People tell you that they're excited about something because of the history of the place. That it sort of makes you in on the, it makes you in on the history and makes you care about it a little bit more. You know, you know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, because if there's a movie about him, I'm sure there's going to be uh, scenes of him in college. Right. Maybe. Hopefully. Right. Right. <laughs> and and then I like, could say, yeah, I, was there. I went to there. Yeah. 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 I went uh, to. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I went to. We were doing a Black History Month show. Uh, man, I don't know, eight years ago, and uh, we try to we try to include lots of interesting r- random history. It's not just like dates and facts and figures, but you know, like for for our for one of our surveys is name a famous African American comedian. You know, things like that, right? Chris Rock. Yeah. So uh, ding. <laughs> so with uh, with one of the questions was name a famous uh, traditionally all black university. And the school that we were performing the show at was on that list. It was Clark Atlanta University. And it was really cool to be at a school doing black history at a place that is just filled with black history, you know? And so yeah. they were all super proud of, of the fact that their school was on the list. And uh, they afterwards, a lot of people came up and told me about some of the alumni that had graduated from there and some of the history of the school. And there's just a, a certain sense of pride that was there. And, what, and and I walked away from there feeling like in my own little way I was part of that history. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty neat. That's cool. Tell me the person who answered that question answered their school, Clark Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, oh, they, they did. did? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they didn't get it wrong, that would have sucked. Like, oh, I don't, I can't think of one. Uh. <laughs> no, oh, and, and and that school wasn't just on there just because we were there. I mean, that was one of the traditional answers on that on that survey, and it yeah. was just cool to be part of that there at that place that was part of that history. Nice, nice. So I, I'm going to watch this movie, and I will uh, give my Monday Club review of it. Um, so I had another show I was been on the road uh, After that I had a showcase in OKC Where I saw you And uh, you tried to keep your distance from me I sure did uh, man and, Again I'm sorry about that bro The day of my showcase is really when my sickness uh, If you haven't noticed I'm sick uh, Really started kicking in And you know when you have something big to do You just kind of gather all your energy And all your excitement And just focus so you don't fall apart uh, and I did my sh- – that's what I was trying to do. And I, I did my showcase. I thought it went very, very well. And then immediately after, I was backstage, and my body just felt dead. I just kind of – I didn't collapse, you know, literally, but I kind of just felt my body just slump over. And I was like, oh, I'm do- so done. <laughs> I have yeah. no energy left. Yeah. Uh, Performing is weird, off right? Stage. Performing is super weird. It's like I, I, I've performed shows that – before the show, I would have told you I just can't move. I can't. I can't get out of bed. I, my nose sounds terrible. I'm coughing it up. I'm. I'm like snot is just constantly dribbling down my nose. Like I'm just. I'm. I am just as ratchet as you can be. And then when you get on stage, like you're right. Right before you walk on stage, your body just sort of has this adrenaline that kicks in, and it's like, well, the show must go on, and you get up there, and dude, when you were on stage for your showcase, you didn't look sick, you didn't sound sick, you didn't cough, you didn't sneeze, you just did your thing, and then yeah. show's over, and then your body's like, all right, let's calculate this bill. All right, I gave you 35 <laughs> minutes of not sneezing, so now I'm going to just make your head explode. And 35 minutes of not coughing, so now you can't breathe. And, I mean, it just, like, it, it totally fast-forwards your sickness. Yeah, and it got worse after that. 
that was the last day I was at the conference. Uh, I had to skip out of the last day uh, and go to a gig in New York. So that night I was up till didn't get to sleep till like midnight and then had to get up at four o'clock or three thirty or something like that to hit uh, to get my flight. So I didn't barely get any sleep there. Uh, then I had to fl- I flew to New York and then uh, I did get a quick nap in the hotel and then I had to two hour drive to my gig and then that was that gig was tough. I was I set up my show sound checked and I went and I closed my eyes in my rental car, which happened to <laughs> yeah I was I was trying to nap before the show. I was so dead and everything you know my nose was just constantly running and I was coughing and. Uh, Luckily, I, I had a Cadillac. Uh, this is the first time I ever got a Cadillac out of a rental car, so that was that was a nice. That's nice. Pump. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but the same thing happened, man. Right before the show, I downed a couple packets of honey. I don't know why I had them in my bag. My friend Allison gave them to me, said that it, they would help me, and uh, I did coat my throat a little bit and gave me a sugar boost. And I went out and, uh, you know, I felt. Not a hundred percent on stage, but I did. Uh, I felt uh, I felt pretty good on stage, and then afterwards, again, just kind of like, oh shit, I got to drive two hours. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Being sick on the road is the absolute worst. There's like no one to take care of you. You're trying to deal with long, long days and crappy hotels, and you're using the shitty Kleenex that they have at the hotel, which disintegrates in your hand as soon as you use it it's just like it's just awful man <laughs> yeah so yeah man so I feel for uh, you. that's the, that's been my week on the road but uh hit, hit so I was, a I was few think- hours today and i was thinking about this uh it seems like you get sick at this specific conference every year is that right or uh i didn't go last year because the year before i got food poisoning right uh <laughs> so so what's and funny is was- is that like if you think about it from the perspective of the clients that you're trying to attract in your booth every time they see you at this conference you look like you're dying <laughs> <laughs> like, that is the most most unhealthy person i've ever seen in my life <laughs> like 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 every time they come like is he acting maybe that's his deal is he gets up there and he's like <clears throat> hey guys <clears throat> you want to see a magic trick <laughs> I'm trying to get your sympathy vo- uh, shows. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Anyway, man. Yeah. Uh, from all of us here, dude, we're really sorry that you uh, you felt so bad. Ah, uh, uh, thanks, man. All right. So, so I'm gonna pick up my story. So I I was in Cali. I hauled ass the next morning after my show for 12 people. Hauled ass to back to the airport. And same deal, like, I had a hard time getting gas in the rental car, I finally returned it, I was hauling butt to walk into the airport, and as I'm walking into the airport, I get a text message uh, from the the airlines that was just like, hey, your flight's been delayed by an hour. Which I was sort of happy about, because I was was cutting it pretty close. So I go in, and I talk to the front desk people, and I'm like, hey, while I'm checking in my bags, I was like, hey, am I going to be able to make my connecting flight and make it back home? Because yesterday would have been my first day home in two and a half weeks, and I was trying real hard not to mess that up. And so they were like, yeah, you should be fine. There's like a 45-minute window. You'll be you'll be okay. Just When you get off the plane, just walk directly to your next gate. And I was like, all right, well, cool. So... I got on the plane, and as I get on the plane, they announce, oh, hey, we're going to delay this another hour. So we sat on the plane for an hour, and then they flew us to Vegas. I get to Vegas, and as I get off the plane on Vegas, there's a big loudspeaker that announces, hey, uh, if you were flying back to Austin, that flight has already left. So go see a gate agent and figure out how you're going to get back home. I was like, God damn it. So I go and see a gate agent, and they're like, okay, well, the only way we can get you back to Austin is if we fly you from here to Dallas and then Dallas to Austin, but you won't land until like 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, oh, man, because the next day I had to get up at like 9 o'clock and drive back to Dallas for a show that we did in Dallas. And so oh. I talked to the gate agent and I was like, man, 
you know, I would rather just stay in Dallas. Like, I'll just go get a hotel in Dallas, and that way at least I won't have to get to Austin and then immediately turn around and drive back to a place that I just was at, right? And they're like, okay, you can do that. And I was like, but the caveat is I absolutely have to have all of the bags that uh, I have because they have all the equipment that I need. And they're like, okay, we'll transfer that over to to Dallas. And I was like, (laughs) you have to promise me that it's going to get off at at Dallas. And they're like, yeah, I promise. All right. So I fly to Dallas. I exit the plane. I go to the baggage claim. Baggage claim, the luggage starts coming up. And after the third piece of luggage comes up, I was like, these assholes did not put my luggage on here. I I I just knew that they didn't put my luggage on there. But you have to wait until all of the luggage is there so you can tell them, hey, my luggage didn't make it. So I waited and waited and waited, and finally the last piece of luggage came off, and of course my stuff wasn't there. So I go to talk to the person who's in charge of bags. It's like, hey, my bags didn't make it, and I I was promised that they would. And they could have not given two shits about my luggage not being there. They're like, well, I guess it'll be in Austin then. I was like, funny, that's not where I'll be. I'll be here, (laughs) but I need that luggage in order to make my thing. And they're like, and finally, I just threw a full-on diva fit. I was like, listen, I take this many flights a year. I freaking ask these people. Like, I I just, I raised my voice. And she was like, sir, you're going to have to talk to our manager. And I was like, good, (laughs) good, yes, do not want to talk to you anymore. So I went to talk to the manager, and she gave maybe one shit. Maybe, maybe half a shit, I don't know. But she was still like, well, I don't know what you want us to do. It's probably going to land in Austin, and then we'll have to figure it out from there. And I was like, nope, that's not what's going to happen. And then I realized that the flight from uh, from Vegas or from, from Dallas, the fr- flight from Dallas to Austin hadn't left yet. And I was like, whoa, my bags are still on that plane. So stop the plane and... Pull my bags off, because I'm here now. And they're like, well, we can't do that. I was like, uh, yeah, you can. Stop the plane. Get my stuff. And so she she radioed some guy down at the at the with the luggage area outside, and they're like, hey, we have a nut job here who's throwing a fucking hissy fit. Uh, is there any way y'all can go and look for his bags? And I could hear the radio, and the guy was like, yeah, I mean, I can look, but I'm not going to pick anything up. It's got to be, like, on the top level of the bags. And she's like, yeah, I understand that. So he goes out to the plane and, like, re-undoes undoes the, the side compartment thing. And he looks, and he's like, are they these two black bags? I was like, yep. They're like, okay, <laughs> well, I got them. And so he pulls them off, and I got all my luggage. So that was cool. Uh, Whoa, yeah. that's huge, It was great. Man. Yeah, 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 it was great. Congrats but, on getting that Yeah, win. thanks, man. Uh, I'll tell wow. you what. That's, like, one of the few times in my life I just turned into a total diva. Like, I just, I mean, I had a full-on temper tantrum. It was crazy. Uh, but don't lie to me, I don't me, think right? I've ever seen you mad. I, I was pretty like, pissed. Like, real mad. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. I was actually pretty pissed, yeah. Uh, so I got my luggage. I didn't have a rental car, so I took an Uber to my hotel, I dropped my luggage off, and then I was like, man, I need to relax after all of that travel and off after those 12 people saw my show. So I took an Uber again to a cigar lounge that was in Dallas. It's one of my favorites. It's called uh, Blue Smoke. It's a really good, good cigar lounge. And I sat there, and uh, I got there about 30 minutes before they closed, so then they kicked me out. And then I was going to go to a restaurant that's right next to it, but then it closed. So I was like, damn it, I realized I hadn't eaten all day. I was like, okay, well, here's what I'll do. I'll order Domino's, and by the time I get back to my hotel, they'll have they'll like be just a few minutes out from delivering my pizza. So I ordered the pizza, then I ordered my Uber, and the Uber took me back to the hotel. I get to the hotel, I get back in my room, I like take my shoes off, I'm like, all right, here comes the pizza! And the pizza guy calls, and he's like, hey, are you Gus? And I was like, yep. And he's like, hey, this is Domino's. I was like, great. And they're like, yeah, we're you're outside of our delivery range, so we went ahead and canceled your order. Good luck. Click. What? Yep. Oh, my God. I was so pissed. Screw Domino's. Right? Why did they even take the order? Well, I don't know, man. Like, I, 
I put in the, the zip code and all of that stuff, but apparently I put in the wrong. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. At this point. So they're on our blacklist. They can never advertise on Monday Club. Yeah, no. Yeah, screw you, Dominic. They're on our blacklist. So, yeah. so now it's midnight, and I have, I have not eaten anything but like airplane snacks all day. I've traveled from California to Dallas. Having eaten nothing, and it's now midnight. And so I go downstairs, and I'm like, hey, do you guys have any Hot Pockets or anything like that? Uh, Nate, I should have taken your advice, dude, and had some MREs like in my back pocket, right? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, they didn't have any Hot Pockets, but they did have another pizza chain that was like a local pizza chain that delivered till 2. So at about 12.30 at night, I finally got my, my first meal of the day. And I was so tired, I had like one slice of this pizza and then threw the rest of it on the floor and went to sleep. But uh, it was just like nothing worked. Everything was so much harder than it needed to be. And, uh, and you know, that's just one of the problems of just being out on the road and trying to fly by the seat of your pants. Uh, but it all worked out, and uh, we did our Title IX show. And then I finally got home last night, and I leave again tomorrow. So... That's my uh, that's my on the road story. Wow, that is a shitty week of travel. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, but you know what though, we we made our shows, so that's a plus, and yeah. the shows went great, yeah. and everyone was happy. We just uh, you know had a lot of shit to uh, deal with. <laughs> it's funny, right? After. Because no one really understands like all the like for those twelve people, like they all had a great time. I had a great time with them. I even got a video testimonial. Like everyone said, they had such a great time, but they just don't realize that that hour and 15 minutes that I spend there is like, that's the fun part. The 18 hours of travel and getting stuck in hotels and being sick on the road and all of that stuff, like, that's the work part. Going out and doing the show, that's fun. Everything else oh, yeah. sucked. Uh, well, that's a crazy story. <laughs> Let me take us to Teachable, Teachable Moments. Moment. I didn't have a good segue, so I just jumped in. <laughs> it was good. No, no, I like it. He's like, well, I guess it's time for this button. <laughs> well, I'm, we're all really sorry for me. Uh, we're all really sorry for Peter and Gus, but uh, let's move on. <laughs> uh, my teachable moment this week is Mucinex is the best. <laughs> if you have... Uh, if you have shit in your nose, shit in your sinus, shit in your lungs, uh, Mucinex will dry it up good. Uh, I like drugs, so give me all the drugs that will help me feel better and not puke up a lung, cough up a lung while I'm talking or during a show. So that's my recommendation. If you're sick, get some Mucinex. Uh, I love that your teachable moment is that you like drugs because my teachable moment of this week is you all should smoke cigars. <laughs> we're the health podcast we're yeah. uh, promoting good good yeah. behaviors yeah. with this maybe we can tag this as one of the wellness podcasts and see if, like, how that <laughs> no so my teachable moment is smoke cigars now monday clubbers i don't necessarily mean that you should smoke cigars but i do think uh, this is for real I do think you should find a activity or a hobby or an interest that when you go to a new city, you can look up that the uh, you can look up that activity or hobby or interest in that new city and go and explore that place doing something that you enjoy, so that you can get a good flavor of the city. That cigar bar that you talked about that you'd been to that's the underground in a basement yeah. cigar bar, man, it was filled with just hardcore Bostonians, man. Like, just, that's like a local club. And it was such a cool atmosphere. And because I know enough about cigars and enjoy, uh, I enjoy cigars for real, I could talk to Lingo back and forth, and that was our bonding experience. So I got to hang out with a bunch of different people. They told me their stories. They told me, like, their life history and stuff like that. But that was super cool, and it gave me a really good flavor of the city just by going out. It, it, as opposed to if you just... If you go to a city and you don't know what's up and you just go to, like, one thing that you see on a travel guide and you do that and you're like, hey, I got that picture, and then you go and spend the rest of your time back in a hotel, find something that you enjoy. So I don't care if it's cigars or 
uh, hookahs or dancing or uh, comedy clubs, whatever it is that you enjoy going to, uh, just make sure you keep that in mind and find that thing in the new place that you're at so that you can really get a, a sense and a bonding experience with the local people that are there. I think it'll make the the new place not feel so... Uh, new and foreign to you, but you'll find common ground that you can enjoy while you're there. And I think that takes us to the end of uh, this week's episode of Monday Club. Thank you guys for being part of the club. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this week of Monday Club. We are the new health podcast. Uh, make sure you come down to uh, check us out, mondayclubpodcast.com, facebook.com, backslash mondayclubpodcast. We're on Twitter at mondayclubpod, Instagram, mondayclubpodcast, and email us anytime, mondayclubpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much to James Caldwell, our sound engineer. Enjoy that free drink from Eric Dittleman. And thank you, Zach Holder, for our music. Uh, we are the health uh, podcast. Make sure you do your drugs and smoke your cigars. Gremlins, the secret word that pays.